So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck, come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code, woof. It's Windows Pro time. Right, I'll tell you there champs. Now let's see if this Dell XPS 15 7590 is any good for content creation. I think probably most of my um, videos on this channel I've probably been done with the XPS 15 last six months when I sold the XPS 15 in January because I thought a new one was coming out at CES. Has been the map. But overwhelmingly, the XPS 15 has been my most used for my channel. So when the i9 XPS 15 comes in, I will be testing After Effects, DaVinci and 3D apps like, you know, 3D Studio Max, Maya, stuff like that. And also, if you wanted to upgrade this laptop, check out the links in the description to compatible RAM and SSDs, my recommended ones. I will have a video on that coming tomorrow, how to upgrade it. Very simple to do. So let's crack on and see how good this is for content creation. So if you don't know, the model I have here has an i7-9750H processor, 16 gigs RAM, and of course, the GTX 1650 graphics card. So a pretty good combo and a nice thin package for video editing. It's going to be powerful, of course. First things first, this OLED display. I had concerns about it. You don't have to be concerned. For content creation, it's going to be really good. I measured like a brightness of nearly 500 nits, like 490 nits. Had a Delta E value of, of a little over one. Pretty much Gamma 2.2. And for color accuracy, it was pretty much bang on. Like I could not tell the difference between the calibrated and uncalibrated display. So it actually was a bit brighter than the MacBook Pro display. Now it is saturated. Anything that is not color managed, it's going to look weird because it's OLED. It'll look garish and like whatever. But if it's color managed and most creative apps are, and you just take in the fact that, yeah, it, it is a bit saturated. The colors look right. I have a calibrated 4K display and the colors look exactly the same as that. So yeah, no worries about the color there. Just one thing about the 400, 500, 600 nits that all different manufacturers are claiming, they're all using the same display. I've heard that from a source that actually this is like the variations in the panel. It can be anywhere from 400 to 600 nits. So Dell are claiming the lowest, some are claiming the highest, but they're all the same panel, so don't be fooled by that. All right, first thing is first, what you're watching here is a DPC latency sort of monitor, and when those green bars go red, it's no good for music production. Now, the last XPS 15 had DPC uh, latency problems, so that's good, everything's green, so if you wanna be a music producer with this XPS 15, it's gonna be very good because it's actually quiet too. So unless you really push the CPUs, you're not going to really hear the fans. I watch Netflix, the fans aren't audible. Streaming YouTube, fans aren't audible. They're not really audible until you really push it. Like you can notice it when you're video editing. Yeah, okay. But with music production, if you're just recording audio, you're not going to really hear the fans. Of course, if you've got plugins and stuff like that and you're you know, making music, you're going to hear the fans. But good news is for recording you won't hear the fans. It's very good for music production in this. And as you'll see later in the Lightroom test, it maintains high clocks with all cores, you know, into the 3.5s um, when we're doing the exports in Lightroom. So you can imagine if you've got plugins that are multi-core, it's going to be good. If you want a single threaded speed, it's going to be good because you get nice, you know, over four gigahertz and stuff with single threaded stuff. And the thing is, i9, i7, the i9 will be the best for music production, especially if you have multi-core plugins and stuff like that. You also get the insane high clock speeds too with thermal velocity boost. But yeah, good for music productions. Well done for fixing that issue, Dell. All right, so there's going to be a lot of people that are coming out claiming they're doing a review. This is how you do a review. You test every single thing to do with the laptop. So here we've got Cinebench, and as you can see, yeah, whatever. It's part of the course here. Yeah, it's faster than Razer because the Razer's like a cap is around 45 watts, and the Arrow is actually 60-something. So it's a bit more than the XPS 15. But yeah, you can see the undervolted scores and the stock scores. That's how these parts perform pretty much. It's standard there. You get a little bit of boost there with the undervolt. Also, if we look at the SSD, we have a Toshiba SSD. It's perfectly fine. It's super fast. You have Hynex RAM on this machine as well. All right, so now we have some Photoshop benchmarks. Now you can download this Pugent System Photoshop benchmark. It does real world sort of benchmarks. It is scripted. So there you go. It is pretty much nearly as fast as the Arrow when it comes to this Photoshop. 
with the MacBook Pros, both of them, yeah, it does lose out there. That is not to be expected because literally now, and it is quite annoying because Adobe done a lot of updates for the Mac. With the Mac, they are the fastest in the Adobe suite now. They just are. They just updated everything. Even like you can make a Mac with the eGPU be faster than the desktop. I'm talking i9, 9900K with RTX 2080 Ti. Yeah, the Mac will render faster. I'm not even joking there. That's all to do with optimization. But then if you have a look here, we look at the XPS 15 score, you'll see it's faster than the 8th generation Aero, pretty much the same as the 9th generation Aero, and yes, it is falling short of those Macs for those reasons I just mentioned. So it's going to be a Photoshop beast. I mean, if it's competing with the Aero, and Aero's got a higher wattage cap on the CPU, also has a, like RTX 2070, that's pretty good. So Photoshop, the XPS 15 has you covered. Okay, so now we have red raw footage, 8K. So this is straight out of the camera to H.264, like YouTube preset. And as you can see there, that the XPS 15 is the second or third fastest behind the Max. As I said before, Adobe Suite loves the Max these days. It's not that it's more powerful, it's just optimized for it. And yeah, it's beating out the Gigabyte Aero and the Razor Blade. So why is this? Well, I can tell you exactly why. With the Razor Blade, as I said, it was capped to like 45 watts so that cpu could not go over 45 where the xps 15 can do 56 that's the reason why there but with the arrow i noticed that it would not hit the gpu when it rendered like for some reason it has something to do with drivers and if you don't already know if you go to nvidia's website you can download game ready drivers or you can download the studio drivers now the studio drivers are supposed to be better for premiere and stuff like that I don't know how to install them. Please, someone let me know because there are some more gains to be had if we have those studio drivers. So yeah, 8K to H.264, the fastest Windows one. So in a minute, I'll talk about the difference between software rendering and hardware rendering. But what you can see here is on the right-hand side is the software rendering. Now that gives you the best results or best quality results. And then in the brackets, you can see hardware. HE is hardware encoding, okay? So what you can see here is this is my famous list and every single laptop's done. There are loads more laptops tested that are on the list that I can't even show. But these are the top ones. And as you'll see, the XPS 15 last model is down the bottom. Now that has, now it's not the bottom of the list. That's the bottom of this list. Like there's a load more laptops slower than that below that. That has a 9.9, just remember that. So that has a 9.9 and you can see there 9 minutes and 6 seconds versus 8 minutes and 55. So like a modest increase there, or sorry, 8 minutes and 54. A modest increase there, but have a look when you look at hardware encoding. But what you see is the Macs are on top. Yeah, and have a look at the eGPU and the Mac. Yeah, that beats a desktop. I'm not even joking. They are the fastest in Premiere now. That's just annoying. Uh, don't shoot the messenger. That's how it is. I don't... I wish they would do an update for the Windows laptops. Studio drivers hopefully do that. Now let's have a look where it is on the list. Once you do hardware encoding, most people will output using hardware encoding. Not many people are going to use software encoding. That's just the fastest way to do it. And with YouTube, you're not going to notice the difference. But look at it now. So all of a sudden goes boom above the Alienware, above the Aorus with a, T with a GTX 1080. And really, it's above both Gigabyte Aeros too. And I explained how they weren't hitting the GPU that much with the drivers there. And the Razor Blade beats it, but the Razor Blade does hit the GPU. I know that for a fact. And that's why that's so fast. That has a really fast one. And then you consider that if you compare it to the MacBook Pro hardware encoding, yes, you can see it's only like 10 seconds slower if you hardware encode. So that's good. So it's pretty much even with the MacBook Pro if you hardware encode. If you're not hardware encoding, you use software encoded in OpenCL on the right hand side. With the Macs, they just friggin' fly. I don't know what's going on there, but with hardware encoding, you have to use metal on the Macs. But as I said, it's only 10 seconds slower than the Macs, and they're optimized for the Macs at the moment. So good thing there with the hardware encoding. Okay, let's look at the more important thing here actually how it performs in the timeline with Premiere Pro. This is a 4K project and I've got the streams here. The project will come in a sec. Yeah, I could play back five 4K streams. Six, it started to drop frames. I only put four there and I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to have to knock one off. It actually done five. So this is the best in terms of Windows laptops that I've used so far. Most of them only do four. So I don't know why that is. Maybe the drivers have been updated I have no idea, but yes, it can play five streams back there. 
Now let's get into the full project here. And this is a H.264 100 megabit file there. So it's from Panasonic GH4 because it is an older project, but still H.264 100 megabits. And we have color correction. So you have a LUT applied, you have color correction on the top. As you can see here, if I turn on the color correction on and off, also have high resolution photos. Okay, so you'll see it just plays through this, like butter, no problems. You can see it plays through the high resolution photos, doesn't drop any frames and have a look there. You have a look for that green little dot there. That'll show you when it's dropping frames or not. Um, no, you will see with this, you know, 4K, it just laughs at 4K now. So yeah, it doesn't drop any frames, plays back smoothly. It plays back through all the footage with the color correction. So let's get on to some higher resolution footage. All right, so we have 6K footage here. So this is just 6K red raw footage. And let's have a look at the scrubbing. Seems fine scrubbing. That seems pretty smooth. So this is at full. Can't say it's bad. It's not too choppy. It seems to be doing it pretty well. Um, this is at half, sorry. Let's go to full. <laughs> I thought it was scrubbing a bit too well. All right, so at full, 6K. Still seems okay. Let's go here. It's hard to tell. She doesn't move that much. This is the only part where she sort of moves a little bit, I guess. The smile. Yeah, it seems okay at full. So let's see if I can play it back. All right, so 6K, no, no, no. We are not gonna play back 6K footage at full. Okay. No, nope, it's not going to happen at full. Let's try it half. It is working. You can probably hear the fan there. So what does it take to play back 6K footage? At half. Can we do that? Still dropping frames at half. Okay, let's see how many frames it actually does drop. Sometimes it's just a matter of the CPU ramping up. 197 frames, that's quite a bit, so yeah. It's not playing back 6K footage at half. Let's see again, just to make sure. Okay, no, that's not happening. And let's go to quarter. Now, 6K footage at quarter still looks good on like these small little monitors here. So the thing is, can we edit it natively without transcoding it? That's the whole goal of this. And 6K footage, it looks fine in those um, preview window so yeah can play it back at quarter no problems there so you will be able to edit this natively you have to put it down to quarter 8k obviously will be a bridge too far but let's see what we have to do to um, do 8k given that the 6k footage I had to put it down to quarter I'd say 8k would be the same okay it skipped the frame there that doesn't seem too bad. It seems pretty smooth, right? So this is at quarter. Obviously, it's not going to play it at full. This is red raw footage. Um, just want to see how many frames that dropped. I'll just hover over that. Um, two frames. So, ooh. So that could just be a matter of it ramping up. Sometimes the CPU will always lag. That's just even if you have a desktop, it just does that for some reason. Premiere probably bug. Um, let's see. Green, green, quarter, quarter, go, go. Yes, yes, quarter, 8K. So that's it. Green all the way, baby. I like to see it like that. So it plays back 8K, pretty much the same as it does 6K. So you could probably edit 8K natively. Now, obviously, you want the best performance, convert it to ProRes, Cineform, whatever your intermediary. Uh, Kodak is or DXNR or whatever but it can play it at quarter which is very surprising I didn't think it would be playing back 8k footage at quarter so right now we're building the previews uh, 75 nefs in Lightroom and as you can see it pegs the CPU might start using this instead of Cinebench because you can see if you had eight cores at 100% this would be a lot faster so this is where extra cores will make a difference having the i9 so it is, what are we, 1 minute 35 into the render, I mean, sorry, into the preview builds. It really does peg that CPU. We're still going 3.6, so 
That's very good, 100% usage. And it used to take about two minutes 10. Um, we're at 150 minutes now. Um, one, one minute 50 seconds. Let's have a look. So see if it does 210. And 210 is pretty much what every laptop done. Uh, going to stop it. Where, oops, stop. 2 minutes and 03. So last time was 2 minutes and 10. That was the last XPS 15. Usually I don't even include this time. Because usually every laptop's pretty much the same. They're either 2 to 2 minutes and 10 seconds. And yeah, it beats out the last one that was 2 minutes and 10 seconds. All right, so let's zoom into some of these. Zoom in, boom. This next one, zoom in, boom. It's pretty instant. Oh, accidentally right click then. Zoom in, boom, instant. Accidentally right clicked again. So yeah, the trackpad, you've got to make sure you click on the left side. Yeah, that's one of the things about this trackpad compared to the Mac one. Uh, again, I clicked on oh, I've got to get used to that. Um, yep, okay, so it's just instant, instant you know, zooming in, zooming out of those previews. I'll just, all right, so let's do some adjustments here. Let's increase that contrast there. Oh, look at that, that's instant. So you can see I'm sliding. It's pretty much doing it instantly. The one that's really hard on the system is that clarity. Let's see, reduce the clarity, pump it up. Look at that. That's really hard on the system, that clarity. So yeah, that's pretty much instant. Um, Let's go in and do some adjustments. So we want to paint some things black. It looks a bit pale in there. So grab that adjustment brush and we'll put that exposure to zero. We'll put the black really down. So that I want to paint these black areas black. All right, so get the brush out. Just, uh, yep. So I'm going to paint these areas black. Um, it's not painting them black. It's just making black blacker, I guess. Um, there you go, that's instant, instant, um, that's really good, so, you know, performance, no problems in Lightroom, look at it, it's instant, let's even try the clarity brush now, I'll take off those adjustments there, actually, I'll leave those adjustments there, and I'll just add another brush, so, add a new brush, and then this one might be for blacks, this one will be for the clarity, which is really hard on the system there. Where is it? The clarity. We'll increase the clarity right up. So every look how sharp it gets straight away. Whoa, look at that. Instant too. Look, look how sharp it is. That brush, instant. And it's already got one brush there. So yeah, multiple brushes. No problems. Making it nice and super sharp. Lightroom. This has got you covered. I'll do an export time. The export times are actually similar to the preview times. All right, I'm exporting 75 nefs, and that used to still take around that two minute mark. Already 30 seconds, and nearly done a quarter of it. Um, as you can see here, this is pegging the CPU as well. We're using 100% of the CPU. So, yeah, I think this is a good test. It's real world. These are raw files, they're nefs, they're, you know, not JPEG, so this is pretty heavy duty, and I'm exporting them to JPEG, so it's 100% CPU usage. Um, that's very interesting, no GPU usage, and so it's 100% CPU test, and we're maintaining some high clocks here, 3.6, 3.7, 6 cores, so be interesting to see if it hits that like two minute mark for the exports, it's similar to the previews, right? All right, so we're exporting these photos. We're at one minute and 45 seconds at the moment. Can we hit that sort of two minute mark? It looks like it's gonna do it. It's gonna be a little bit quicker than two minutes. Um, yeah, boom, stop, one, all right, stop, come on. That's right, boom, one, <laughs> 158. There you go, one minute, 58 seconds. Yeah, can range from, you know, these um, ninth generation or eighth generation CPUs can range from two minutes to two minutes and 10, just like the previews. And yeah, it's on the faster side. So it's pretty much one of the fastest at sub two minutes. So it is really good for doing this sort of thing. Now have a look at the task manager on the left and you'll see that this is hardware encoding. So it's using the Intel HD graphics and it's using the GPU as well. Not so much of the CPU, we'll use the CPU but not so much. It's more using the GPU of both the Intel HD and the NVIDIA. So that's why the CPU clock is so high because it's not really getting used. It's only using like 50% of the CPU now.
So this is all down to Intel HD and the GPU. All right, so in here, I'm gonna change this from hardware encoding. I'm gonna change it to software encoding. Now this will take longer. It'll be a better render though, better quality render. And we'll export that. And then we'll have a look at the graph here, the uh, task manager, and you watch the difference. It will still use GPU, but look at the Intel HD. It barely uses it. In fact, it doesn't use it at all. One thing you'll know about this render test too, which I test all my uh, laptops on, it is RAM sensitive. So it's using 10 gigs of RAM. If you've got 32 gigs of RAM, it'll use 24 gigs. If you've got a 128 gigabyte system, this render will use 32 gigs. So you might think, oh, 32 gigs, I'm not bottlenecking. Yeah, you are. If you had 128 gigs, this render would be using in the system up to 32 gigs. So there is a difference there. You can hear the fans kicking in there. It is, um, you know, pushing the system there. But look, see, it's using the GPU. The CPU frequency is down. But look, it's using 90% of the CPU. It's just gone backed off a bit now. So it will sort of alternate between GPU and CPU. And there, look at the CPU usage. Boom. It's gone up to 100%, 84%. It was never doing that on the hardware encoding. So I do have a lot more content when it comes to this. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see more content. I have the i9 coming in. And yeah, this is how you do the review, right? You test every single thing. A lot of people won't even do this sort of testing. And I make sure I test it all before I, you know, finish my review. And I'll be comparing it to the MacBook Pro. So to wrap it up, this thing is great for content creation and great display. I want to see the Ultra HD with the i9 that's coming. I really want to see that display. It does everything you want for content creation. I will cover, you know, some more content creation with 3D and then and After Effects in the future. So yeah, good machine for content creation. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.